aerosol. Good for your hair, bad for the environment, but gotta pick your battles. Good evening and happy nuclear Armageddon. Our top stories tonight that we'll be spinning in order to manipulate your mind are Pfizer finally admits it. Biden's got a new scandal in Saudi Arabia. No laptop needed. Tulsi Gabbard leaves the Democratic Party for some reason. Alex Jones is ordered to pay nearly $1 billion and schools are creepier than ever. What are they doing there? Find out. But first, our top story is brought to you by Pfizer. While testifying at an EU hearing about their very profitable treatment that they, along with governments, have pushed, coerced, and mandated citizens into taking in order to stop transmission, Pfizer admitted they never tested their product to see if it stops transmission. Regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. But I assure you, this shouldn't be seen as a big deal because at this point, we're just splitting hairs over these finer details. However, the company is expected to be fully accountable by being forced to gaslight the public and pretend this never happened. Nonetheless, the world is shocked to learn that the company that's paid the largest criminal fine in US history, $2.3 billion to be exact, would purposely mislead the public. There's no way anyone could have seen this coming. Following the criminal organization's admission, Posts like this have popped up all over social media. And our official statement is, we don't know what those posts are referring to. With regard to their product, it turns out that all the corresponding censorship that's been going on for the past two years has been censoring truth. Once again, censorship proves to be on the wrong side of history. What are the odds? Turns out 100%. But that's just throughout our entire history to date. We'll keep trying to defy those odds with our continued censorship efforts for your protection. But what do the people have to say about this situation? Well, when Pfizer's admission broke, a viral post by James Smith, which much to our disliking hasn't been censored, said, so it turns out, get <laughs> to save other people was a farce. I think I owe a lot of people an apology. I genuinely thought I could trust the experts. I'm very disappointed to have been hoodwinked by the propaganda of 2020. <laughs> what an idiot. He fell for it. But we want to forcefully remind you that though untested via the company's own admission, these products are safe and effective at stopping transmission. That's why your trusted politicians have aggressively intimidated you into taking them. Like Illinois Congressman Sean Gaston, who last year tweeted out, All Illinoisians 12 years and older are eligible for the They are safe, effective, and key to our path back to normalcy. Everyone in my family, including my 14-year-old daughter, has started their process. Very inspiring and helpful. And in sad news, we've just learned that the congressman's healthy 17-year-old daughter has just suddenly passed away from cardiac arrhythmia. While we truly are sorry to hear of her passing, there's no uncensored word yet on what caused her heart failure. But it was probably just old age. Onward we go. Joe Biden attempts to coerce a foreign nation into influencing the upcoming U.S. midterm elections. Biden asked the Saudis to cut oil prices until after the midterm elections in what appears to be an attempt to keep oil prices from soaring in order to manipulate more people into voting for Democratic candidates. But who's making these accusations? Because the only ones who would know the truth in the matter are Biden and the Saudis. Well, it turns out the Saudis are the ones that threw Biden under the bus that he himself was driving. This came when the Saudi Foreign Ministry released a statement saying President Dementia tried to coerce them into cutting oil prices until after the elections. Now, this is a big no-no and an impeachable offense for any president who runs a democracy. So luckily, Biden should be fine. And even though the Saudis aren't playing midterm ball with Biden, 
His administration still has hope that we'll have a free and fair election coming up, with a little help from Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. We hope the censorship strategies are going well, guys. Let's move on before we start thinking about this too much. Tulsi Gabbard has announced she's leaving the corrupt Democratic Party. She joins over one million people who have left the Democratic Party and registered as Republicans in the past year alone. But there's two sides to every story. Here is a comprehensive list of all the people who have left the Republican Party to join the Democrats in the past year. Why is this blank? In other news, Brandon is making his presidential mind more obvious than ever. This time while speaking of his son, Beau, who died in 2015 of brain cancer while at a hospital in Maryland. Take a look. Just imagine, I mean it sincerely, I say this as a father of a man who won the Broad Star, the Conspicuous Service Medal, and lost his life in Iraq. Now this will bring up two logical choices in your mind. Either he's the crazy one, or you're the crazy one. And the correct answer is you're the crazy one. Trust us, everything's fine. It's fine, it's good. President Crime Bill's honoring of his deceased son who now lost his life in Iraq comes just two weeks after he attempted to raise a deceased congresswoman from the dead. Representative, Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? What can we say? The president has a way with dead people. He's very relatable to them for some reason. And now we need a scapegoat to divert people's attention away from this. Oh, here we go. Alternative media personality Alex Jones has been court ordered to pay $965 million in damages to Sandy Hook families. Jones is being ordered to pay nearly $1 billion for causing pain and suffering for telling lies about Sandy Hook. Pfizer's legal team is probably saying, you have to pay $965 million, Alex? Hold my beer. This just in, we at the media won't be ordered to pay anything for the pain and suffering we've caused in millions of people for the lies we've told over the past two years. This is good news and not surprising because the lies we tell are big enough and told often enough that you believe them. Thank you for your continued support. And we're relieved that Alex Jones is being held accountable because he's dangerous. What's going on in California? Well, the latest is a California school board is in hot water with some parents for defending a boy who was masturbating during class when they said, that's normal. Now, despite the school board defending him, there is speculation that the masturbating boy could still get in trouble with the school as he allegedly violated school rules when he didn't state his pronouns prior to masturbating in front of the class. Which is just common decency that would allow the rest of the class to appropriately address the boy while they watch they there him masturbate. Back in my day, I wish I knew you could just do that. I would have enjoyed school a lot more. Moving along. Following Matt Walsh's expose on Vanderbilt Hospital's lucrative practices on slicing and dicing children's genitals out of this dimension in the name of stellar profits, the hospital received massive backlash from we, them, they're the people. In response, the hospital has announced they're pausing gender transition surgeries on minors. And this is downright heartbreaking for all of us who care about using children to advance Marxism for profit. We can't let this happen. We have got to work together because together we can protect the children of our communities from being protected because the children in our communities are from our communities and together we are in our communities together with our children in our communities. Did I just accidentally quote Kamala? I feel presidential. And I feel the desire to lock up countless people for marijuana offenses. Hmm. That's it for tonight's news. In response to Pfizer's admission, it's now more important than ever to obey the tyrannical medical industrial complex. Brandon's face would be red with embarrassment if he had cognition and the people seem to be overpowering the tyrants. Tune in tomorrow night to see what our next move is because the chess game's not over. Good night.